Hey, hey, boys, how you going? Going on, boys. Back. Good to see you again. Yeah. Going on? Not much. How you going, yeah. Mick? How's the weather? Very well, very well. <laughs> Keeping well over here, lads. How's everyone going over there? Good, mate. Good, I've got to ask. How's the weather in <laughs> Queensland? <laughs> just yeah, just say it's good, bad. mate. It's good. Very good. It's shiny. Very good, yeah. very nice. <laughs> Uh, good times. All right. Good times. So last time, last week, we uh, chatted about uh, alcohol, mm. uh, a certain type of toxin, and now we're just going to look at toxins in general. Yeah, which is yeah. such a broad topic huge, that huge. it was hard to hard to study. I mean, yep. I, I reckon maybe if we just c- consider this discussion as a bit of a an overall leading of of toxins, yeah. and maybe we go back later on uh, and have a look at specific ones. Yeah. Because uh, I think we wanted yeah. to talk about detox in the in the coming weeks, didn't we? Because mm. we've been pretty negative the last few weeks. <laughs> negative yeah. on coffee, negative on alcohol. Oh, don't do coffee was neutral, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm not probably, getting off coffee. Fuck nah, that. Nah, 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 nah I'm going to dramatically reduce yeah. uh, alcohol, but coffee, nah. But alcohol could be considered a toxin. Oh yeah. So, oh, no doubt. You know, we we probably wanted to counteract the argument with a. A detox and maybe a few things we can talk about that, but yeah, well, that'll be a learning experience for me because I'm not a big detoxer. I've mm. never really done a detox protocol or anything like that, so that'd be yeah. That'd but be we've good. got to we've got to know what toxins to get rid of first yep. before we detox because you know if we're continuing to use the same toxins, then what's the point in detoxing if you're going to exactly. continue to use the various things we'll probably talk about today? Yeah, yeah, it's a mm. big issue, isn't it? It's a big. Yeah, we live in a pretty toxic world now, and there's a lot of stuff that we get exposed to, which is clearly not that good for our health. Almost everything. Almost everything, yeah. and it's quite hard to avoid a lot. Of, well, there's certainly stuff that we can't avoid. You can't mm. avoid the air that you breathe. Yep. Um, but we can certainly make good choices around what we apply to our body. Yeah. Which uh, is maybe the way we're going to go. Say a little yeah. bit, isn't it? And sort of what well, we're exposed I, to in our households, I guess. Can I link it to last week's episode with the BPA lining? Do you, most people are aware of BPAs, right? You know, drink bottles yep. contain, what is it? By bisphenol A. Bisphenol A. Yep. But then they probably have the, the other one, B in it. Oh, that's, that's right, yeah. But so, I might have been you telling me this, Smithy, was that uh, aluminium cans and, you know, tins that you get your tins of tuna in, mm-hmm. to keep the alcohol from damaging the aluminium can, they still line it with BPA. They sure do. And they don't have another option as yet. No, they don't. So you'll get an organic beer. Mm. You're drinking your delicious organic beer, but it's still coming in an alum. If it's one of those ones that comes in an aluminium can, which a lot of them do now because it's fashionable, it's lined with BPA. Yeah. So I didn't know that. You know, like no. everyone talks about that we got to get rid of BPAs. It's a BPA free drink bottle. Yep. It's BPA this. It's all free of BPA. Well, one, they're probably just filling it with another. You can't really get a plastic that's not too toxic for you. But yeah. Yeah, right. Tins yep. of beer. Still have BPA. Cans. It's cans of beer. Yep. Cans, sorry. Yep. Tins was, sorry, for being colloquial. Yeah. <laughs> have a so couple of tins. Have a couple of tins, mate. So it obviously just shows a lot better to drink your beer out of a stubby, out of glass. Out of a glass, yeah. Yes. And I yep. think the beer aficionados say that the aluminium is better because the light or whatever reacts with the, the drink. So you want to – that's why they have the, the dark-coloured uh, glass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think like a lot of the – or pretty much all the um, like boutique breweries seem to use cans now, don't they? They do, they yeah. have the very fancy artwork on them and stuff. But yeah. Um, I but, but that's an example of an everyday thing that people don't think about, isn't yeah. it? Which is obviously why I brought it up. That yeah, we're just crazy. getting this. Um, yeah. And yeah. We, we've just talked about alcohol in our previous week. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I thought that was really interesting. And, and just the, the advent since the 50s of plastics, I reckon we are now experiencing today the side effects over two generations of exposure to these dangerous um, plastic chemicals. Yep. Uh, increases in ADHD, asthma. Uh, autoimmune conditions, uh, a lot of mental health issues. I reckon we're seeing the side effects. And hormonal of, is a big one as yeah. well. Oh, definitely Men's hormonal. Testosterone man. dropping and yeah. weird things, with estrogen and yeah. man, it's bloody sperm count. Sperm, yeah, yeah, yeah. The low fertility rates in today's society. Uh, it's all this whole build up is starting to catch up with us and yeah. really show its ugly face now. Did you Did you also see the thing about the um, perineum? And the shrinking of between the yeah, testicle, what's it called? the taint, what's the, yeah. taint. Yeah, I think right. well, Rogan yeah. called it the taint. Taint. Yeah, and yeah. Well, actually, he had a specialist on, um, Shauna Swan, Doctor Shauna Swan. That was a really good episode to listen to because they talked about thylates, and thylates are in 
just about all of your hair, healthcare products, yeah. hair um, conditioners. Can you just spell that for the average Joe? Because I didn't uh, know how to spell that word before I started looking at it. P H T H A L A T A T E S. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thylates. Thylates. Yeah. Thylates. Th- some people say phthalates, don't they? Or yeah, phthalates. So it's like, f- look at the pH is like a silent or it leads into. And so they're the man-made yeah. chemicals that are in plastics to make plastic uh, harder or also more malleable. Yeah, so plasticizer compound sort of yeah makes stuff bendy, like it's in kids' slime, but yeah. it also makes it hard too. Yeah, yeah. So it's in kids' toys. It's in kids' toys. It's in drink bottles. It's yeah. in hair care products. It's in nail polish, conditioners. Fuck everything, yoga mats, um, yeah. or anything that makes plastic bendy. Even yeah. food packaging, food packaging, yeah. yeah. So anything wrapped up in plastic, mm-hmm. yeah. Even which is fast food burger, which is which also has that oh, film inside yeah. it. Yeah, that's lined with uh, PFOS, uh, yep. polyfluoro. Uh, uh, I should know this, shouldn't I? Alkaline substances, Teflon, Teflon PFOS. Like, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Linked to sort of metabolic syndrome, um, yeah, this, this study I looked at, the association between thylates and metabolic syndrome, National Health and Nutrition Survey, 2001 to 2010. So this is going back a few years. They found it damaged hormones, so it's endocrine disrupting, causes man boobs, causes the smalling of the taint, mm. so the, the gap between the testicles and the perineum in male babies. You know why it's called a taint? Well, because it taint your ass and it taint your balls. <laughs> is, that, is that what it is? <laughs> or you could say it's a tisn't. It isn't your ass and it taint your balls. <laughs> is that is that true? I don't, oh, that's it, what I call it. Yeah, but it, taint taint is definitely the word, isn't so it? So I'd never heard of that until I listened to. I the, thought because the skin down there was a bit darker or something like that. It's is that tainted. It's oh. tainted. Tainted skin. Ooh. Is that a thing? I don't know. No, no. that sounds. sounds yeah, I couldn't. That's just yeah. out of my brain. That's just what I imagine. I know it's close reason. to you. Your butthole, so it's kind of tainted with. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's the perineum. We are big on the perineum in this. Podcast. Yeah, you love a perineum. Yeah. yeah. So that I don't. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what that meant. The shortening of that. Yeah. For was, for babies, doesn't it, doesn't it correlate with um, hormonal disruption? So in male babies, like a, a low a sperm count, lower sperm not, count, and a, yeah. a drop in testosterone and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that was what it was. Yeah, but yeah. that's re- that's really interesting. That's it's we're terrifying. changing, we're changing our physiology as a species. As yeah. a species, yeah. we're evolve evolving to yeah. be something else. What's the opposite of evolving? Devo- devolve. Devolving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going backwards. It, but it like, seemed that there are. was the male hormone system that was really impacted by these. These are phthalates. Well, they're estrogenic, aren't they? So they're increasing mm. the estrogen. Yeah, in yeah, right. Males, yep. yep. Man boobies and whatnot. Yeah. So I guess in, in in females, you're going to see like earlier development and things like you're going to see little girls go through puberty a lot earlier. Yeah. Mm. And then you're going to see in males, obviously, yeah, that drop in testosterone and the more sort of estrogenic effects. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. None of which are good. No. You don't no. want to be a little girl going through uh, puberty at ten and no. You don't want to be a man with big old man boobies and no, uh, no testosterone because you're no. going to feel great yeah. and you're going to have poor mental health and all that But isn't stuff. it interesting over the last 15 years, whatever, 20 years, that we, we say, oh, it must be the chickens. It must be the steroids the and, the chickens, and the chickens or the hormones yeah. and the chickens that are making these kids I remember, I remember that was start brutal, puberty earlier. Yeah. But uh, it's got to be the plastic. Yep. It's got to be it's this the shit the chicken's wrapped in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they're genuine. This study from 2000 and – well, the study was in 2016, but they looked at a survey – up to 2010. So at this point that they know this is a genuine endocrine disruptor. Yeah. And it's causing the th- things we've just discussed about. Yeah. yeah. There's girls um, and boys. It's decreased it's, thyroid function as well. Yeah. Um, and there's a bloody epidemic of that, don't you reckon? Every, yeah. I, I know so many people now who've got uh, like issues with thyroid, like, you know, mm. mostly hypothyroidism, but yeah. it, it seems to be a growth thing. Yeah. Whereas I feel like 20 years ago, you didn't hear about that much. Mm. Oh, might have never heard of the word Hashimoto's. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah, affecting children and all sorts. Of, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's really crazy. Yeah. yeah. So anything that has scented perfumes or fragrances in it is, oh. is bad as well. It's the same. These thylates are used as, yeah, Mate, parfum. Is- so if you look at your, if you've got your deodorant and you look at it, it's got parfum. It's the same thing. Yeah. Any sort of perfume that they put in there. 
Yeah. So, so that's it, got thylates in it. Mm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. with a um a scent or yeah. a um a, a car fresheners. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will have phthalates in it. So uh, the, the chemical uh, binds the the smelling agent or whatever um, to to the product. But mate, Jonesy, that's what really really freaked me out. Yeah. The amount of phthalates in our personal care products. Yeah. So you you mentioned a few perfumes, cologne, nail polish, hairspray, soaps, shampoo. Skin cream and, and moisturizers. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Sun cream could possibly fall into that as well. Well, some sun creams have parf- parfum. You right, know, is one of the things they call perfume or fragrance. Yep, and they can write on those ingredient lists. They can write those terms, and people are oh cool. It's it's parf. It's yeah, it's, it's perfume. It's just perfume. Just the French bean oil yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I don't know. I think natural fragrance even even falls under that category. I may be wrong. Someone could correct me, but it's like with food, there is something like fifty different names that they can use for MFG. Yep, yep. They can call it natural flavoring, all sorts of things. Sugar can be called a number of things. Yeah, yeah. You there's look a lot of trickery that goes on with yeah. renaming things. I'm that are bad to sound less bad. I want to throw something at you because I know you quite well, Rooster, and I know what deodorant you use. The body crystals one. Yeah. So that's got you have a look on the unscented one. Yeah, it's got parfum on it. Has and it? It's got thylates in it. Damn. And it's got potassium alum. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'll have to change that then. Yeah. So I've, I've been going through some full on changing of my um, personal products. So yeah. I'm now using homemade soap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I'm actually even looking at making my own. A good one for that is Dr. Brunner's. Yeah. It's a Castile soap, which is um, they use. Saponification, you boys will know that word. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of the breaking down of oil. Yeah. So they use olive oil for that. They break down the olive oil. Yeah, it's a good one. You can make. There's heaps of um, good homemade ingredients f- to make your own soap. Like yeah. even out of coconut oil. Yeah. Um, different types of products you can make soap out of. You can watch uh, Fight Club. They did it in Fight Club. And yeah, do you remember that scene? I don't. <laughs> Don't Doesn't worry. that involve uh, crawling into a dumpster and getting people's old <laughs> human fat? <laughs> human fat. <laughs> that, and then he catches it on the barbed wire. And ah. it, that nearly made me vomit in the cinema. Wow. Anyway, we I distracted you with some Fight Club. Bad. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, it's interesting in and if you don't know how to look, you know, you don't know until you know, right? You, yeah. You've got to actively kind of seek out these things and need to be told by f- four dudes on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. It's good well, it's something you can make a massive difference with. Yeah. Like just yeah, what yeah. you put on and into your body. Yeah. If you're not uh, inhaling it, ingesting it or yeah. absorbing it. Everything, anything natural, you know, you've got to. Um, so I, I used to get a lot of mouth ulcers and I, re- I reduced my, I got rid of my toothpaste because it's in toothpaste as well um, to have a natural one. No fluoride, gone. Yep. So any any sort of yeah, right. any ailment you look at, if you if you break it down to the the modern ancestral man concept of everything ancestral, what am I doing? I'm I'm getting these sores in my mouth. They're painful. You know what am I going to do? Oh, keep doing what I'm doing, or look at what I put in my mouth all the time. Oh, toothpaste. Yep. Oh, fluoride. No, that's no good. This that's no good. That's really interesting you say that because I used to get mouth ulcers. Up until maybe five or six years ago, and we probably switched out our toothpaste to like a natural toothpaste maybe yeah. five or six years ago. And I haven't really put it together, but I don't ever get mouth yeah. ulcers anymore. Yeah, it's crazy, hey. Even if I bite my lip now, like when huh. I bit my lip as a kid, I, I would know, oh, that will turn into a little ulcer. Like, you know, sometimes when you nip yourself. Yeah. Whereas, whereas now, it's that's, not a that, drama. That's so exactly I what I had. Put those two things together, but. Yeah. So if I, if I bit my cheek yep. previously, you know, before natural toothpaste, it would turn into a. I can throbbing ulcer yeah. for weeks. And they're bloody painful. Two to three weeks before it go. And, you know, you can't eat anything for – anything acidic anything now. Salty. Yeah. Like you said, yeah, that that doesn't happen anymore. Crazy. Yeah. So just that's simple probably, kind of things. That's probably uh, a real soapbox moment for us, I think, boys, uh, particularly given what we're all about here. And I think, um, you know – delving a little bit into some of these fallacies that we're, we're led to believe around um, toothpaste and, uh, and the, you know, uh, the, the introduction of uh, fluoride into, into the toothpaste and the water. And, and certainly many of the um, dentists around the world would profess that, you know, fluorides are a required uh, element in, in, um, in teeth health and, and all that sort of thing. 
when I looked at this, I sort of looked at um, sort of three of our commonly used um, uh, daily so sort of things we use daily. I looked at toothpaste, which you've indicated there, Jonesy. I looked at sunscreen as being another mm. one. And, and the last one I looked at, which, you know, most people use every day is, is deodorant. Um, and I think that the, the deodorant one's pretty... I think people are waking up to deodorant now. You know, they're certainly the impacts of packaging and things like you guys were delving into and then going into, obviously, the the, um, the impact of it, the aluminium within the, within certain deodorants and, and the raft of health issues that can lead to. But I think sunscreen is a really interesting one because we're certainly led to believe that, uh, you know, and I, I don't think any of us would would query or question that uh, there, there are certainly damaging effects from sun expo- long-term sun exposure in the middle of the day and things like that. But I would argue that some of these um, less natural sunscreens are actually more damaging than the sun. Definitely. I agree. totally agree, mate. Yep. Well, the, the, the oxybenzenes and the preservatives in them are known carcinogens. Yeah, and and you know our, the skin is our biggest organ. Okay, it, it is. It is. You know when we look maybe at it from yours, mate. <laughs> when we look at it <laughs> from that perspective, um, it, it's feeding into every system in the body: our lymphatic system, our blood system, everything. It is impacting everything. Yep. And and we we have been led to believe as a society that the most uh, a beneficial way of protecting ourselves from the sun is to go and plaster our skin in these poisonous sunscreens. And it's just, I, I think there's a lot of research coming out now to prove yep. that actual usage, long term usage of a lot of these sunscreens, one of which was promoted by our own Cancer Council in Australia, yep. actually caused larger instances of cancer than what sun exposure did yeah Mm -hmm. so you know we really need to and this is one of those moments for me here is we need to you know it's important we shine the light on these things because some of the stuff that people are putting on their body spraying on their underarms brushing their teeth with are causing significant implications to their health yeah well the sun so, sunscreen one is massive isn't it sorry to cut you off there mick no, yeah it is it's huge it's if huge the, the cancer council promotes those sunscreens that are damaging and the other one that is is really i find really hard to wrap my head around is we know that that sunscreen if you go in the ocean is damaging the reef right so yeah. it's terrible and you have got uh you know, animal activists talking about conservation don't eat meat, groups. you can't eat meat, conservation groups, don't go out in the sun, put this sunscreen on and go in the ocean. You, it, it boggles my mind to know that what we know now, it is not being talked about more, that people need to get rid of these sunscreens and you shouldn't be going in the ocean unless you're using a natural zinc sunscreen. Yeah. Well, you look at the labels, and I, I would urge everyone to just look at the labels of everything that they put on mm. their bodies or, or consume. And I think we're so ignorant to reading labels, and even just Google some of the the big long words that are in there. If you if you poured all those ingredients of sunscreen or whatever skin cream uh, or soaps into a glass or a cup and said, "Here, drink that," this you know, the, in the in the cup is this and that and this and that. You go, "Fuck that! I'm not yeah. drinking that poison." No but we just seem to be so happy to push it on our skin. Yeah. And like Mickey said, your skin is your is your largest organ, and it, it and it absorbs it. all these chemicals. Yeah. If you can't eat what you're putting on your skin, I wouldn't be putting it on my skin. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I think yeah. a few people, a few, uh, fe- a few people in the health sort of scene, McCola and those kind of guys, Greenfield, to say, yeah, if you can't, yeah, yeah. If you can't eat it. Don't put it on yourself. Well, I've been, um, I want to go, because I use coconut oil when I'm frying. 
I'm going to start using coconut oil for my because I like to moisturise my skin. I like to um, have my skin nice and nice and soft and keep my youthful appearance. Coconut oil is good. Coconut oil, I reckon, you put you, you know you spill somewhere, you get some on your hands, and you rub it in, your skin comes out great. Mm. Doesn't coconut oil have a slight uh, effect in actually blocking the sun? Yeah, Doesn't it's it got have a, a little SPF of eight? Uh, there you go. Yeah. Natural SPF. Yeah, so yeah. get some extra extra virgin yeah, right. coconut oil. So if you look at must be sorry, uh, avocado must do the same then, Smithy, because okay. um, I've yeah. got avocado sunscreen now, and, right. it's, and it's like a zinc, okay. and it sort of stays on your skin a lot longer. And I guess like the coconut oil might have that SPF um, mm. factor as well. Yeah. If you look at a lot of the sunscreens, like that avocado one, they're made in WA. Yeah, they? they are. Yeah, uh, there's another one called uh, I think it's Hello One Two Three or something like that. Um, yeah, they've got coconut oil in them. Yeah, and sort of zinc oxide, and that's about it. Well, we've yeah. got a family Caprylic acid and family friend uh, surname found. Uh, they make um, their own skin products oh, yeah. out of natural um, natural products. Yeah, and if you Google um, "found my skin," yeah, so as in their surname, my skin, uh, you'll be able to buy their products as well. They're WA based. Oh yeah, cool too. Yeah, that's right. awesome. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I bought some. Um, uh, Avocado sunscreen and it was forty bucks. Yeah, um, for a for a decent sized tube and you don't yeah. need a lot of it. No, chuck on your snozz or, oh, or that's your shoulders. I mean, we've talked about that about going out in the sun before. Is you know you can use that Deminder app. I bang on about that because I think it's amazing. But you know you punch it in, you spend twenty minutes out in the sun. It says okay, now it's time to cover up, or otherwise you're going to get sunburnt. You cover up if you still now need to be out in the sun. Maybe you put it on your nose in the back of your hands or or whatever it is. You know, yeah, I, I think. Um, even reducing our use of sunscreens in general oh, it's a good one. Yeah, it's crazy. And you just mm. see parents smothering. I mean, obviously they're looking after their children yep. ignorantly, but, you know, you see them smothering the kids down the beach with this poison. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, there is alternatives. There are. There, there yeah. are natural alternatives. And, we, <laughs> yeah, the Environmental Working Group is a really good website for sunscreens. Oh, yeah. um, in a G- ewg.org uh, I think it's an American one you can go on there and it sort of highlights what's in sunscreens the ones that are known carcinogens <laughs> um, your oxybenzenes your uh, anything with benzene in it is probably no good yeah uh, you know it's got a list there it's got I think it's an American one so but I think it talks about titanium dioxide and zinc dioxide are the only two ones you should be using as sunscreens mm. yeah I've yeah. heard the yeah. argument check out that I've heard That's the argument right. not to use uh, like one with zinc nanoparticles. Oh, right. Just because there's a <coughs> concern about, because they're obviously so small being nanoparticles, that w- whereabouts are they going to go in the body that they're not meant to go? Yeah. Uh, versus just using one that's zinc oxide, which is yep. obviously a bigger molecule that's not going to pass through areas that it's not supposed to pass to. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that's a thing or not, but... Yeah. I've always wondered whether putting zinc sunscreen on helps your uptake of zinc. Don't know. No, no idea. No, no, no. <laughs> nah, no me idea. either. Uh, just before we go, if anyone's interested, that avocado zinc, it's avocado zinc or one word dot com dot au. Yeah, you can go in there and order it online, and it come real quick. It's it's, it's a good one. It's mm. probably the biggest barrier is price, isn't it? Like all this stuff has yeah, a yeah. has a cost yeah. uh, component to it. Yeah, and yeah. if you start to tackle every aspect of your life, then if your money is tight, then there's going to be an issue, isn't there? So that's when we come into those lifestyle things like you touched on where maybe you can't avoid, uh, afford to be spending all this money on these personal care things. So maybe change the way you live your life. So don't go outside in the middle of the day, yeah. in the middle of summer, unless you're covered up. Yeah. You need to go outside, then wear a you know broad brim hat and a long sleeve shirt and sort of minimise your time in the sun. But yeah. that's for me, that's the one thing that hasn't caught up yet is the, the cost um, – yeah, the, the cost, cost of being prohibitive. healthy, like yeah. it, it's like food. You can go to the supermarket and buy a one dollar loaf of crappy white bread and fill your belly, or you can go next door to the organic supermarket and buy you know lovely grass fed meats and organic fruit and vegetables. But it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. So yeah, yeah. it's it's again. That, I guess um, you get what you pay for. Hey, you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, and you yep. think about the sun creams on the shelves at your supermarkets, and they're you know five ten bucks for a quite a, a large size one, but they're just full of shit. Full of crap, yeah. You know, um, yeah. It's a choice you got to make, us, I suppose. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, that, the that, that, that in itself says a lot, though, doesn't it? That you know, it's actually more affordable to be sick and unhealthy. Yeah, we'll look you at know, fast it, food. Yeah, yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, is absolutely. It, is it just that so many people 
are not awake to this that there's not a market for these alternative products? Or, yeah, that, I mean, that's I mean, what I was talking about, the sunscreen. It just baffles, baffles me because we know that it damages at least at least the oceans, you know, at a very minimum. It's, it's a known thing, and for people to still put that stuff on, you know, cheap cancer council sunscreen, cancer council. Think of the marketing, though. The marketing has been massive, particularly here in Australia, um, with a hot sun. Yeah. You know, slip, slop, slap, whoever yeah. have, has not seen that ad, yep. you know, or uh, you know, two, two, two of those words are probably credible. You know, yeah. slap, what is it? Slap on a shirt, slap, slop on sunscreen and slap on a hat. <laughs> <laughs> that so shirt. definitely, definitely slip on a shirt and slap on a hat, but yeah. maybe be very selective about the sunscreen yeah. that you're going to slop on. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, there's like, just to your point, Jonesy, there's a lot of marketing fed to people, yeah. um, and people don't have time to research. Yeah. I'm sure. If but you isn't that what the count? Sorry, isn't that what the cancer council does? They do their research on cancer and skin cancer, and they're recommending stuff that has ca- carcinogen in it, isn't it? Yeah. It seems crazy. I can't crazy. get my words crazy, out on, doesn't it? It's yeah, a bit it's, of a yeah. it's oxymoron, isn't it? Yeah. It sure is. Sorry, I'll, mate, I'll cut you off. I was just going to say, I'm sure if you stood in a chemist or a supermarket and you showed a, a parent who was a consumer of these products the the studies behind the, the carcinogens in sunscreen, I'm sure they would make a healthier choice yeah. for their kid. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure it is just someone sees it on the TV, they go, oh, cancer cancel approved, bang, don't need to look into it. Yeah. I'm going to go and buy the cheapest, nastiest, 50-plus sunscreen from the supermarket. Yeah. yeah. I'll is shop it? based on price or maybe based on brand. Um, and we'll, yeah, don't need to look at it. Well, yeah. is the Cancer Council, I don't know this, I'm asking the question, is that a government department? Is that a government-funded? I funded? don't know. That's a good question. Um, which is probably that not. Could hey? there lie your answer, right? Eh? It's, it's probably <laughs> yeah. all marketing. No, I'm pretty sure certainly a lot of their research and everything is government-funded. Because um, we know the government yeah. don't really have our health in the forefront of their minds, really. Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, they, 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 particularly with the sunscreen one, they, they actually had to come out and, um, and uh, recall one of their sunscreens because it was proven to be, um, you know, there were significant instances of people... Uh, saying that they had negative effects from the sunscreen. Yeah, right. And, you know, I I look at things like that and other sort of components of the journey we've been on with my wife over the last sort of six years, and, and there's a lot of contradictions. You know, there's a lot of contradictions in terms of things that they recommend and, uh, and certainly through our exploration and coming together as we have guys, you know, we, we'd agree that, recommendations on nutrition, recommendations on a whole raft of things uh, aren't sort of correlating with what we would see as optimum health. Um, but but particularly these ones, you know, these daily, uh, daily used or commonly used household products, um, to think that they're putting them out there, calling them safe, uh, mm. I, I think it's a real blight on on. on the overall health system in our in our country. Yeah, Cancer Council is a registered <laughs> is registered with the Australian Tax Office as an income tax exempt charity. I'm also looking here on their website, CJ, and they also. Ex- so I'm also looking at their website, CJ, and it says here that they do accept uh, corporate partnerships. So I don't know that whether that's going to maybe sort of sway their take on certain things, but certainly if you've got a, a partnership with other corporate entities, mm. they're, they're probably um, not going to want you to bag out their products. No. I don't know. It, it seems like the the good sunscreen is more expensive, so mm. Mm. they can make some money that way. Yeah. <laughs> like you say, like, I think you might have alluded earlier, Smitty, you, there is, they, they do have that argument that they are, they are cutting out some uh, ultraviolet rays or, or whatever. Uh, it's just that the, the, there's that counteractive... Um, issue of other carcinogen carcinogenous products in in the sun cream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so they might actually be re- pre- preventing, you know, having an SPF yep. um, barrier, but there are other issues. It's mm. like the drug with the side effect, and yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a whole rabbit hole, isn't it? But mm. I mean, it's the same with fluoride. Like we all drink water, and most people brush their teeth with toothpaste that contains fluoride. We know that fluoride is a neurotoxin. Yeah. We know that it lowers the IQ of babies 
like like we know this is happening, yeah. but we still keep putting it in our water and we still mm. keep using it um, to brush our teeth with. Maybe there's an argument that it helps your teeth. I don't know. But if I was going to choose my brain health and my teeth, I'd probably look after my brain first. Yeah. Mm. And my teeth would, you know, yeah. hopefully also be good. But uh, if I have to have the trade off, yeah, I, I don't use fluoride, so we don't have no. any fluoride in our water. And I use a fluoride free. Uh, toothpaste and when I go to the dentist I use a holistic dentist that doesn't use uh, fluoride mm. but if I were, I were to go to a normal dentist then I would say no to the fluoride treatment at the end because I don't think it's worth it no. yeah no. yeah definitely I've, I've gone with a fluorideless toothpaste and um, you know your, your mouth already produces certain bacteria and enzymes to help with with uh, you know cavity formation and stuff like that so sometimes the use of fluoride toothpaste is actually damaging those healthy bacteria so it's sort of like your gut biome you, gut, you yeah. know yep. um you're, da- you're damaging natural bodily functions within your mouth that um that can look after it s- itself anyway and you're damaging your brain yeah because yeah. wasn't fluoride some form of fluoride used as a um a, a pest control um spray like a, a, an a, a ter- extermination I think it was fluoride. I could um, be wrong on this, but I think fluoride started as some sort of industrial byproduct that they needed to get rid of. Yes. Uh, from, Sounds from like seed oils. No, I'm pretty sure this yeah. is a thing. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure from uh, like, back in times past, it was a it was a byproduct of something. Yeah. And then they worked out that they could, you know, get rid of it or on sell it or whatever. Yeah, by I did hear that. By, by touting its uh, benefits for for tooth health. Yeah. 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 Yeah, another example of making money out of something that's uh, mm. a byproduct of something else. Just overcomplicating things, aren't we? Yeah. But, but I guess, I guess uh, we might do a whole episode, as I mentioned before, on detoxification. But the good thing about not all of them, definitely not PFOS, that's what they call a forever chem- chemical. It stays in your body the whole time. Um, a lot of these thylates and stuff we can quickly detox on and get out of our system fairly quickly. You know, if you if, if you want to reduce your exposure risk, that that's a good start. Anything with plastics in it, sort of get rid of that. And I know it takes a little bit of effort, and again, again, it's a little bit more expensive. But getting rid of the plastic things you store your food in, you know, you've got some leftovers. There's plenty of good glass products you can buy. Make anything with glass in it, trying to reduce the plastics. Get rid of anything scented. You know, you. Your, your scented candles, your scented stuff in your house, anything with parfums and fragrance in it and fabric softeners in washing and air fresheners. You can get sort of little essential oil diffusers. They're pretty good. Yeah, we've got, you know? we got one of those. Yeah. yeah. yeah and if, you, if you need your house to sort of smell nice and open up the windows. We haven't really talked about low VOC paint or flooring or anything like that yet, but... Yeah. Or uh, fire retardants and fire furniture retardants, and mattresses yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But on those uh, essential Indoor oils. Indoor plants, maybe? Yeah, yeah. On those essential oils, it's always good to look for products made from those. Yeah. Uh, because those those are that's, essential that's right. oils are often um, yeah, yeah. replaced with the, the phthalate yep. um, chemical binding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to, to create a scent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, uh, and that's an interesting one, guys, because... Um, we, we went through the process of sort of overhauling, overhauling our house, uh, you know, sort of six years ago. And um, one of the things that we did was connect into uh, an essential oil sort of uh, group. And, and that was how Wifey started making a lot of her own deodorants uh, and um, uh, scented uh, things for the toilets and things like that. And so... That is, that is, you know, when we're looking for sort of cost-effective ways to still to have better health but, you know, not stink or, or things like that, I think that can actually be a cost-effective way if, if you've got a little bit or you're prepared to put a little bit of time into using those essential oils and things like that to actually make some of your own products. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And you can just um, jump online and find heaps yeah. of resources yeah. to make your own stuff. Yeah. But even if you don't have time to do that, which a lot of people don't, it's just just choose um, like buy from homemakers or alternative or artisan um, yeah, sort yeah. of like go to your local markets. You will find heaps of people that make their own soaps, their own shampoos, and you know obviously you got to buy them, but you you don't have to make them yourself. Yeah, uh, there's heaps of alternative s- sources to buy these things. Yeah, people that pride themselves in making these sort of products. Mm. 
Well, that's the thing. We've got to support these people if we want yeah. these areas to be that's available right. and to grow and to eventually be uh, more cost effective. Then, then we need to support them. Otherwise, they're going to yeah. they're not going to grow. They're going to die. So, yeah, you've uh, got to let your money do the talking. You do. You, yeah. you need to put your dollars towards what you think is valuable. Yep. And if we all just uh, keep buying the absolute cheapest product, I mean, stuff's just getting worse and worse, isn't it? Generationally, yeah. it seems like the quality of things and the the the, the level of toxicity. Um, you know, the quality is getting lower. The toxicity is getting higher. Yeah. So we really have to start making conscious choices, and yeah, whether that involves like making it yourself or supporting a company who's doing great work, um, that's what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. Spot on. And even uh, where we store our food, so maybe ditching your Tupperware. Yep. Um, and storing your food, and I know you've done a lot of this, Jones. You're replacing a lot of your plastics, yeah, uh, food storage with glass. So yep. try to store your food in, you know, in China plates or uh, or in glass. Yeah. You can get um, some good glassware. Even even yeah. IKEA does them. You know, you can yeah. go in there. Yeah. They often come with plastic lids, but if you yes. take the plastic lid off before you cook in it, yep. um, then certainly it's just getting cooked in clear glass and there's sort of no yeah. toxicity there. Yeah. Well, we recycle, um, you know, the big uh, coconut oil jars. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we put our almonds and our, um, oh, yeah, yeah. our walk and nuts in there and our yeah. cereal in those jars um, and so that you're recycling. But if you do use plastics, um, I'll just have a look at these, um, you know, the moulded recycling codes in the little recycle oh, yeah. triangle in the bottom of plastic things? You mean the thing, the number inside the thing? Like Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. So basically you want to avoid the numbers three, six and seven. Right. So they're your most toxic um, plastics with higher levels of phthalates in them. That's yeah. really interesting, mate. Yeah. 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 Uh, and well, the, one, the good ones um, which have – less uh, toxins in them are one, two, and five. Right, right. So I guess if you're looking at a, even like a, dr- a drink in a plastic bottle, you look at the bottom of it, you see that little triangle. If it's got a yeah. one, two, or five in it, you know, it's sort of better okay. than nothing. Yeah. You know? mm. um, don't microwave your, f- your plastic. That's a yeah. really bad one is yeah. heating in plastic, isn't it? That's, yeah. You see people microwaving those instant oh, meals and man. they've got the plastic yeah. tub they sit in and the plastic thing yeah. that you puncture. And, oh, oh, man. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, yeah. far out. Yeah. It's so wrong. Yeah. So there's replacing, a few things we can do, hey? Yeah, replacing your bottles with your stainless steel drinking bottles. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. last longer. They do. Yeah. 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 It's better for the environment too. I mean, it takes yeah. so much uh, oil and energy as a society to keep making all this plastic. Yeah. Like, like plastic comes from oil. Yep. which is a finite substance, which is you know not not great mm. that we got to pull that out of the ground and all the energy that goes into the manufacturing of it, and it's a disposable item that then doesn't really break down. Yeah, I mean you're doing yourself a favor and you're doing the environment a favor. I mean, it's win-win, isn't it? Yeah. Like, well, when you go to Asia, you know, and because obviously Westerners go to Asia, they don't drink the local water, so they're buying water bottles and their stockpiles of water. Of, of plastic bottles is just depressing mm. when you see it. Yeah. Um, and then isn't there that big uh, area in the Pacific Ocean that's like uh, There's several hundreds yeah. of thousands of kilometres in diameter of just swirling plastic yeah. in in the, stuck in this current that you can't escape? Yeah. It's I don't they're trying, size to work, they're trying to work out ways to s- send sort of like robotic things in to like scoop yeah. it up and all these ways to deal with it. But it's, yeah, mm. it's real bad. Yeah, and then all that plastic goes into the seafood that we eat. Yeah, yep. you know, a lot of pretty much all seafood contains a lot of microplastics. Yeah, especially like bottom dwelling things are worse. But well, don't they reckon we consume yeah. a credit card size of plastic in a month or something? It might have even been less. Might have been it like might a, have week. a week. Might yeah. have been a week of eating. Yeah, yeah I think we I heard that on Rogan's podcast. Yeah. 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 yeah, I've heard that. That's no good. On credit a f- card on a size days. of plastic. Yeah, I hope that's modifiable depending on like the choices you make. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, geez. Plastic man, it's just a yeah. I just my wife was telling me last night. So if you recycle your soft plastics, I don't know if you guys do that, but we do that. Put them in a thing, take them to Coles, a Red State, I think they're called. Uh, they're a company that then recycles them. Oh yeah, they are over capacity and have had to shut down. Yeah. So what do you mean over capacity? They got the too much stuff that they can't couldn't, recycle. Couldn't deal with it, so they're just like uh, can't do it. So. Mm. Soft wow. plastics that we were supposed to, you know, recycle and take to coals and, yeah. I mean, these big businesses have got, should have some corporate responsibility, I yeah. feel like. That that should be an arm of their business yeah. that they, they deal with and it's just a cost that they come up with. Yeah. The other thing that shits me about supermarkets and stuff, you go in, oh, do you want to make a $2 donation to such and such? Well, you're the big company making a shit ton of money. Yeah. How about you take some of our money that we've paid you and donate some of that. Yeah. Or help yeah. with our plastic recycling. Yeah. 
they're, yeah. they're putting it on the consumer who's consuming their product for the goodwill of their environmental kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, that makes no... F- that's How does that happen? But then yeah. you go to their fruit and veg section and they've got some fruit Everything and veg wrapped. in a, um, a, 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 a... What's that? Foam tray yeah. wrapped in glad wrap. Four apples yeah. wrapped in a yeah. foam tray and glad yeah. wrap. What the Why fuck? Why can't I just grab four individual apples and take them with me? Yeah. I mean, again, though, support your local yeah. Yeah, fruit yeah, farmer's yeah. market. Go to a place yeah. where you might get like a at least a, um, a paper bag. You know, you yep. might yep. fill up a few fresh apples that are loose in there. Yep. Um, you know, that guy's probably got a much shorter supply chain where he's probably sourcing stuff locally rather than, you know, coals that might ship their lem- – I know a lot of lemons come from the USA and, yep. you know, they're shipping stuff from all over the world. There's quite a long, um, you know, footprint for all that stuff you're buying. Yeah. yeah. You know, again, go local. You might pay a little bit more. might be a bit less convenient to go to your, your local fruiterer and then your local butcher or whatever. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's probably going to be better for you and probably better for the environment as well. So I reckon there's a big swing around that, Smitty. I reckon, I reckon there's a, a big yeah. turnaround happening with that. Yep. Um, I went to my local IGA, Independent Growers Association. I know, you know, compared to your big supermarkets, they are a, a little smaller entity. Uh, and I was looking for some kangaroo meat and they didn't have any. And I said, look, I'd rather come here than go to Woolworths. I don't want to support Woolworths anymore. And um, we started talking and she said, oh, what's that? And I said, well, every time I went to Woolworths during COVID, uh, they forced me to wear a mask and I couldn't get my groceries. Uh, and I didn't want to wear a mask. But every time I came here, you guys let me do my shopping without any hassle whatsoever. So I really appreciate that. And now I want to support you going forward. Um, and and she said, well, well, if I got some kangaroo, would you would you buy it from us? And I said, bloody oath, I would. So she goes, oh, bloody well, oath. We'll um, <laughs> we'll have a look at getting some in. Great. So imagine you're saying that to a person in Coles. Hey, you got any kangaroo? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Going yeah. to see the Coles manager and saying, can you get some kangaroo in for me, mate? Sorry, mate. It's yeah. not on our uh, well, not, yeah, not in our inventory. It. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. definitely a swing about going it's back about towards the choices we make. Yeah. 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 Speak with your money. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, that's the only thing that seems to motivate change. At the end of the day, is money, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah, you can yeah, do all the other stuff that you want to do, but really, if you just, um, you know, money will dictate where things are going to flourish. Yep. Yep. So if you support shit you don't like, then it's not going to change. And that's right. If you decide to make your dollars and cents do the walking and support good stuff, then hopefully that'll get uh, more popular and we'll get yeah. better choices and prices will come down. And my big organisations are seeing this happen. People are yeah. moving away from big organisations that they don't agree with and it's it's slowly having an effect. I'll yeah. tell you what's popped up a fair bit that's sort of on my radar now is people doing um, like co-ops for food. Yeah. Are you guys across that? So there's sort of yeah. like a lot of uh, cooperatives now where they'll order from a bunch of really good ethical, uh, usually like organic suppliers and they've got a giant list of all the things you can choose from and, and once every few weeks or whatever they'll do a big shop and everyone puts their order in. And then all on the same day, all the food comes in and then there's usually options to either go and uh, pick it up or sometimes some of these co-ops deliver. Okay. And uh, my parents have actually started using a, a co-op which is based uh, in the Perth Hills and they're probably 15 or 20 k's away from that and they're doing most of their shopping through that now and they reckon they're getting organic food uh, delivered to their house for the same price as what they were spending in Coles and Woolies. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, how good is that? There's options yeah. out there. Yeah. They're probably not as common, and a lot of people aren't, aren't really aware of them, or maybe don't know how to connect with them. But, but I never never knew they existed. I, I think these things are becoming more and more popular. I, th- I don't know if maybe they got uh, a bit more popular during COVID when there's lockdowns and things like that, and yeah. they've sort of gotten a bit bigger. But we've been using a couple for a few years, and they sort of had limited lists of things you could get. But they seem to be getting better and better, and cool. a bit more sophisticated, and now some delivery options. And I, I think it's a really good option for people. Yeah. Uh, to look at going forward, it, it can it definitely reduce your reliance on um, your big suppliers. Yeah, yeah. And, and your food being wrapped in plastic and travel. Well, all of it comes loose for that sort of stuff. Like it'll come in. Um, the yeah. worst thing it would come in is like a, a paper bag, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So if I just um, research or, or search for food co-ops, yeah, I can Perth. pick you some details once we're um, yeah, man, the podcast if you yeah. want. But, yeah, I'd um, really be interested in that, eh? Yeah. Again, I'm learning something personally on these uh, yeah. these little podcasts. Yeah, chats. and these co-ops are all. Local, obviously, because it, it's a local thing. So they're yeah. only th- these guys are only going through WA uh, suppliers. Oh, they yeah. do get dried stuff, I guess. So you can get like dried nuts and other things that might come from further afield. But certainly, all their fresh fruit and veg would come from the local area. Yeah, awesome. which is good. Good shit. Yeah, yeah. I think another Solutions. good one to consider there, Maddie. Uh, you know, 
out there is, as you guys know, we've recently sort of incorporated a little bit of meat back into our um, our sort of weekly plan for eating for the family, and uh, it's it's it was proving quite difficult to source um, sort of grass fed organic meat up here. Um, so what we've actually started to look into, because we want to make sure if we, we're going to incorporate it in, it's got to be the best stuff, is actually buying a whole carcass. Oh, yeah. So, yep. so rather, you know, because you obviously pay more if, you, if you're going in and buying sort of your steaks um, individually and things like that. So w- w- using that same sort of co-op um, strategy, we've sort of got, got come together with three or four families who are – similarly focused in terms of their health and and we're all looking at sort of coming together you know buying a whole animal uh and then having that um still deconstructed by the butcher and sort of separated out amongst the families and when you actually go and get the sort of pricing on that it, it over the duration of time you're eating the meat it's as affordable as it is to sort of go and buy your your uh your steaks uh, consistently. Um, so that's another really effective way of sort of doing things as well. If you've got the, I guess the freezer storage space and things like that. Yeah. And what a great opportunity to get your uh, organ meats as well, mate. Um, if you've got your butcher there, who's deconstructing the animal, getting your organ meats, which are very, very beneficial, but I guess very quick, effective way. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess, um, one of the biggest uh, ways to, to reduce the effects of phthalates, if we're talking about those, is just to stay healthy mm. because apparently phthalates can be rid from your body quite uh, quickly and effectively by urine, uh, feces, and even sweating. So if you're drinking lots of water, you've got a good diet, which is keeping you regular, you're exercising, that you're having a good sweat out, often Maybe you are... sauna. Yeah. yeah, sauna, yeah, like hot therapy. You, you are expelling these, these phthalates that can accumulate in your body without you know, keeping a healthy lifestyle. You can supplement. I think it's glutath- glutathione, is it? Or, yeah. Or comp- yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff. The precursor yeah. of glutathione. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in our detox uh, podcast yeah. where yeah. we can support the different phases of detox and yep. liver support. and um, well, Having some sort of antioxidant supplement. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, all, all of that. And I think spirulina and um, chlorella are good for that too. They, they, co- they kind of bind... Oh, that maybe they're more metals. They're binding the toxic metals. And yeah, they're good for metals. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Plastics yeah. and but yeah, yeah, just keeping healthy. It's the whole package, yeah. like you say. It's it's lifestyle, but this yeah. is a big part of it. Like you know, we've just touched on the sort of tip of this today. Mm. Yeah, but yeah, if people are just quite selective about what they put in their mouth and what they rub on their skin, that's a huge advantage right there, yeah. isn't it? Because yeah. I mean, ingesting and absorbing are two of the four pathways for how we get things in and out of the body. And there's a lot of bad stuff that you can ingest and absorb if you're not um, selective about what you're using. Yeah. So just just start looking at your personal care products, especially if you've got kids. Really look at what you what you're rubbing on your kids and what yeah. you're putting in their mouth. That's yeah. super important. Definitely. Yeah. Another another, another Smithy clothes off, <laughs> hey, hey, and he just shrugs it off, hey. He's like Yoda the yeah. Jedi Master. <laughs> if only you talked backwards or in in rhyme, that'd be perfect. That's a good finisher, though, Smithy. That is a good finisher, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I'm looking forward to our chat on detox upcoming in the next uh, weeks or months. Yeah. Good, because it ties in with all this. and Mm. Ties in with the festive season coming along, too. Yeah. 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 A few few drinky poos going on and the sun coming out now, people down the beach and outdoors. Yep. Yeah. Festive time of year down in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Very good. Yep. All right. right. Yeah. It's good to see you fellas again. Yeah. Yeah. Always good to catch up, folks. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Yeah. Get your air guitars ready. 